all right, you thought you might have escaped them, but graphs are back, right? We've been doing a lot of equations, and now we're just going to take a look at a problem where it gives us a graph for f, it gives us a graph for g, and then it gives us these two functions here. So h of x is f of g of x, k of x is the opposite, it's g of f of x, and it's going to ask us, ask us to find a derivative of h at 1 and a derivative of k at 2. And so how are we going to do this problem? So let's start out by writing out what it actually wants us to find. It wants us to take the derivative of f of g of x, right? And not just x, but it wants us to take the derivative at 1. And so if you take back a look at some of the first slides, this is really just a chain rule kind of statement, right? So the chain rule says d over dx of f of g of x is equal to f prime of g of x, so the derivative of the outer function, times the derivative of the inner function. And so in a lot of my other videos, I've been writing times d over dx of g of x, and this is just another way to write that. So we're going to follow that through here. We're going to say, well, by the chain rule, this value here is equal to f prime of g of 1 times g prime of 1. Now there's one thing we can evaluate in this whole thing without taking a derivative, and it's this g of 1, right? So g is this graph that goes from y, uh, 0, 8 to 8, 0. And g of 1, it's, it's a little bit hard to see on this graph, but you can trace it out. g of 1 is actually going to be 7, right? So what it's really looking for is f prime of 7 times g prime of 1. So notice the step for the chain rule was, here was my chain rule step, and now I'm just trying to evaluate things. So g of 1 was the first thing I had to evaluate, and g of 1 is 7. Now I need to figure out what f prime of 7 is and g prime of 1 is. All right, so let's start with g prime of 1. So g prime of 1, we're asking for the slope at this point, the slope of g at this point. Now notice that g has constant slope everywhere, and so the slope at this point is going to be the same slope as g everywhere else, which you can calculate by delta y over delta x, and that's going to give you negative 8 over 8, which is negative 1. Right? So the slope of g at 1 is negative 1. Now, well, how about the slope of f at 7? So let's come to 7. And where's f? Oh, boy. Looks like f doesn't even have a slope at 7, right? Looks like it's just constant. It has slope 0, right? So f prime of 7 is 0. And so if you actually multiply this out, h prime of 1 is going to be 0. Now let's take a look at k prime of 2. Hopefully this one isn't 0 as well. So we're going to start it out the same way we did before. So d over dx of what k is equal to. So g of f of 2. So it's the opposite orders before, right? And so by the chain rule formula, by this thing with f and g's switched, we're going to take the derivative of the outer function first, so g prime of f of 2. And then we're going to multiply that by the derivative of the inner function. Now, so how do I do this? So f of 2, so f is green, so f of 2 is going to be 4. Right? Well, let's use a different color for this so we can tell it apart. So f of 2 is going to be 4. And I can plug that in. Right, so we'll have instead of g of f of two, we're really looking for g prime of four, and we're multiplying that by f prime of two. So g prime of four. Well, let's look at where um, uh, x is equal to four in the graph g. So sorry if you're sorry if you're mixing the colors here, but so. The reason why these two colors are blue is because f prime of 7 is there, g prime of 1 is there, and the reason why these two colors are orange is because g prime of 4 is here. We're looking at the slope here, and f prime of 2, we're going to want to look at the slope here, right, at x equals 2. So we already figured out what g prime of 4 was going to be, right, because the slope over all of g is constant. And we know that g prime of 4 is going to be negative 1. Now for f prime of 2, we haven't figured out the slope here yet, but notice that it's going to be constant from 0 to 4. right? And the slope is going to be, again, you can calculate it by rise over run. 
And the rise here is 8, but it's done in 4. So the rise over run is 2. And so that's my slope. So it's negative 1 times 2. So my final answer there is negative 2. So big idea when it's asking you about when it's asking you about the derivative of something that's a composition, write out your chain rule formula and then just start going step by step and figuring things out from your graph. But you have to write out the formula first and then you use your graph to kind of pick out the things that the formula tells you is important.